Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Worship at St. John's. My name is Pastor Lindholm. It's my pleasure to lead you in worship. We're going to focus this morning on living the true Christian life, where we find personal reward in our lives, uh, give glory to God, and please Him in what we say and do. We begin now with the first hymn, number 466.
of the Holy Spirit, I, your faithful people, keep us strong in your grace and truth, protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today is the 13th Sunday of Pentecost, and our first lesson is from Proverbs 9, beginning in verse 1, reminding us to live our lives in wisdom and understanding. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her mate and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out Set out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. But all who are sick will come in here. She says to those who lack judgment. Come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. Here ends the first lesson. We'll now sing Psalm 1 on page 64.
Today's gospel is recorded in John 6, beginning in verse 51, where Jesus calls himself the bread of life that mystifies some of his hearers. He explains that everybody needs to feed on him, that is, believe in him, and then they'll have eternal life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, to tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I'll raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died. He who feeds on this bread will live forever. Here ends the gospel lesson. <laughs>
was observing some people partying on a boat in a very excited fashion. He said, they're living the high life, referring to them having a happy time, a happy life. And all of us would like to live a happy life, a good life, a fulfilling life. And it should not take beer to accomplish that. I know a cold one now and then hits a spot. Our text for today contains five tips for living a fulfilling Christian life. And the same advice that Paul is giving here to the Ephesians applies to us. And if we heed those words and that, that advice, we can live a good life, a happy life, a fulfilling life. We'll call it living the high life. Tip number one, make good use of your time. Are there times that you sometimes wish you had more time? But the Lord has chosen to give us 24 hours in a day. And that's really a lot of time. But there are times you wish you had a little more time to get things done. Might, may, might boil down to your time management. You don't want to waste time frittering away on doing nothing, getting nothing done. Time management means planning ahead, organizing yourself and your schedule, and prioritizing, especially taking time for those things that are essential. Because time is a gift from God. And you want to use it wisely. That's what it says here. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So instead of blowing time on unconstructive things, it is wise to use your time for things that are constructive and productive. Things that refresh you mentally, physically, and most importantly, spiritually. That you make time for God, whether that be in your prayer life, or your personal devotions or meditation, or your joint worship of Him, or serving God by serving other people, by showing love and kindness and compassion for others and helpfulness to those who are in need, you'll find fulfillment in that. And that's part of living the high life and using the gifts that God has given you. Our text says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Or we could also say, the days are short. Make good use of the time while you have time. Because in a sense, you are living on borrowed time. Your days are numbered. You'll not be here on this earth forever. And for that matter, this earth will not be here forever. Both your life personally and the world itself will end someday. So now is what is called your time of grace. Your time to live in God's grace, serve Him, make good use of your time while you have the time. Tip number two, seek to do the Lord's will. Who's in charge of your life? Just you? Are you the captain of your ship? The one who makes all the choices, all the decisions? But what does the Lord fit in? What about His will? You ever think of what His will might be for you? Or do you just always ignore His will and just do your own thing? That's foolish. It says here in our text, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. It is foolish just to venture off doing your own thing, not consulting the Lord, 
for his help or guidance. Consider the kings of Israel. History tells us those kings who, when being faced with the approach of an enemy, if they're wise, they consult the Lord's will. Either personally praying to them, to God, or consulting a prophet of the Lord. To determine what is the Lord's will for me? And then praying, of course, for the Lord's help. And those kings who were wise and did that usually were victorious on the battlefield. Conversely, those kings who were foolish, didn't bother to consult the Lord, totally ignored him and his will, and just ventured into battle on their own, usually lost on the battlefield. It's important for you to consult the Lord's will. And how do you do that? By praying to him. And consulting his word, the Bible, all kinds of good tips there for godly living. But let's say you're planning a big trip or some big project and you want that to be successful. You say, it will be successful. The good Lord will it if a crick don't rise. That's an old saying. Of course, the cricks around here did rise, didn't they? A couple of weeks ago when we got all that rain. But usually we don't live in fear of the cricks rising. And we should know the good Lord is willing and able to help you and guide you. He's always there for you. The psalmist says he never slumbers or sleeps. And so you need to consult him and his will for you and trust that will because the Lord's will is always best. Tip number three. Don't get drunk. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Can you live the high life with Miller High Life beer? Sure. As long as you do that in moderation. It's not a sin to drink beer or wine or some other alcoholic beverage. As long as you are of age, but it is a sin to drink to excess, to binge drink, and to get drunk. For when you get drunk, you get out of control, and then bad things happen. As it says here in our text, it leads to debauchery. And basically, that means to lose control and then do disgusting things, immoral things, shameful things. If you get drunk and then drive, Really bad things can happen. Not just a DWI, but maybe an accident, and worse yet, you might hit somebody, maybe even kill somebody. That's called vehicular homicide. That's not living the high life. Or if you drink too much, perhaps you might be abusive to your spouse or family. And that's no way to live the high life. Or if you drink too much, you might lose control, stagger down to the river, and jump in and drop. That's not living the high life. Our text says that you're not to be high on alcohol, but instead to be high on the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He should be a key part of your life, because he's the one who brought you to faith. He's the one who keeps you in the faith. And you should use his means of grace, hearing the word of God, partaking of Holy Communion. And through those means, the Holy Spirit works in you to strengthen you in your faith and guide you in your life, to keep you on the right path so that you can live the high life in a way that is pleasing to God. Tip number four, make music. It says here, speak to one another the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. You ever sing in the shower? 
or hear somebody singing while they're walking down the street, or when you are out somewhere with your car, you like to listen to some music to help you relax, or some people when they're going through kind of a tough time will sing a song or play the piano, play the violin to ease the tension and help them relax. They say happy people like music. Or look at the birds of the air, or actually listen to the birds of the air when they sing. Some of them are their melodic tunes. It's like they're living the high life. And look at what we do in church, in our worship services. We employ a lot of music. We sing hymns. Some of the responses are put to music. We sing the songs regularly. That's what the people of God did in the, in the, in the Bible times. We have organ music, piano music. Sometimes an instrument might play. We have choir music whether it's a children's choir or an adult choir. And the main purpose of all of this music is to praise God, giving Him praise that He deserves. While you might say, I can't sing a lick, I can't carry a tone. And that's why I don't go out for choir. I get cut. Well, the Lord gifts everyone in different ways. And you may not have the gift of singing melodic tunes, but you can still make music in your heart. That's what it says here in our text. To be happy in your heart. To praise God in your heart. He knows us that and is pleased. Martin Luther was a, a great musician. Here's what he had to say about music. Music is one of the fairest and most gracious gifts of God. It removes from the heart the weight of sorrow and the fascination of evil thoughts. It refines the passions and improves the understanding. Those who love music are gentle and honest in their temper. I always love music, but not for a great matter be without, without the little skill that I possess in it. We had more than a little skill. We had a lot of skill in music. He wrote and composed many hymns, many of which we still use today. He restored congregational singing to the worship service. To this day, the Lutheran church is often called the church of the beautiful music. And a lot of that credit goes to our forefather, Martin Luther, who made music. Tip number five. Give thanks. Our text says always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a really great verse. We have so many blessings, so much to be thankful for. And we need to thank God regularly. It says here to thank God the Father. He's the one who has brought you into this world. He's given you life. And he's adopted you into his spiritual family. Has worked out a plan of salvation for you. He guards, protects, guides you day after day. He gives you all the blessings, spiritual and physical blessings that you need for your day-to-day -day life. He makes it possible for you to live the high life. And here's a real key to giving thanks. It says to give thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a number one reason you should be thankful. The Lord Jesus Christ has done it all for you. Now when he was on earth, he lived the ultimate high life, showing love and compassion for others, preaching and teaching the Word of God, fulfilling every single ordinance of God, thus fulfilling the law for you. And then he did the supreme sacrifice of love 
offering up his own lifeblood, his own life into death on Calvary's cross to pay for every one of your sins. He won for you the forgiveness of sins by his work of redemption. And because you have that forgiveness, that means that someday you will be able to live the ultimate high life in the highest place of all, heaven. Your ultimate home. Now it's interesting, it says here to give thanks for everything. Now sometimes you might be going through a hard time. Maybe having a bad day. And it's hard to think of giving thanks. But you really should. Anyway. Because you've always got things to be thankful for. If you think of the blessings you have, your home, your family, your church, a God who loves you, there's always something to be thankful for. If you focus on that, on the good things you've got going for you, the blessings of God, that will put you in the proper frame of mind, a positive frame of mind. And you can give thanks to God every day. In a short time, we'll be singing a, one of our popular Thanksgiving hymns, Now Thank We All Our God. It's written by a Lutheran pastor. His name was Martin Rinkhart. And he lived and served in Germany during the terrible Thirty Years' War. And there was famine and pestilence in the land, and especially in his hometown of Eilenburg. He's the only Lutheran pastor in town. Many people died. And he was the only minister to perform burial services, sometimes as many as 40 a day. And all 6,000 people died during that famine and plague and war in Eilenburg, including Rickard's wife. And he himself had some serious illness to deal with. He had serious financial reversals. In spite of all this, he wrote this wonderful hymn, Now thank we all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom his world rejoices. He rejoiced and gave thanks to God and missed in the midst of all his calamities. We should rejoice and give thanks to God every day because we receive blessings from God every day. And so you can live the high life. And you can do that with or without Miller high life. Keep in mind these five tips for living a godly life. Make good use of your time. Seek to do the Lord's will. Don't get drunk. Make music. And give thanks. Do all those things and you'll have a happy life, a good life, a fulfilling life. You'll be living the high life. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we'll now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It is printed on page 41. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please receive it for the offering.
O oh Lord God, our heaven, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, comforted in life and in death, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.